anything. Whatever it fit. Charlie. And whatever. Hey, Charlie, how's it going? Uh, up and down, hey, yeah. <laughs> mostly down. I can hear you now. How's it going, Charlie? <laughs> up and down, mostly down. I'm in a down bit of the a drain lap. and up in smoke. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm hot. It's very hot here. Feels like July. Where are you exactly, Charlie? I'm in Western Kentucky. Yeah, you in are. In a small town called Paducah. Okay. Don't step in that pile of Paducah. No, nobody wants to. You'll never get it off your foot. That's awesome. Do, do we have people coming? Yeah, we do. It's uh, right to the hour at the moment, so. Okay. Well, I thought I'd try this again. My bandwidth really is bad. And and it's it like garbled a lot, and it's frustrating and kind of difficult. So basically, we call that bad width. Bad width, yes, bad width, really bad width. So what you been working on, Charlie? Well, I've got the uh, uh, added support channel. Uh, Sam and Doug are so Michael Jehoshaphat is there. Uh, we're working on pre internet stuff for Africa. Uh, I'm listening to a lot of orphanages and people crying for food and money and water. I found there's an organic gardener in Kenya. So I'm just basically trying to show people how to get their stories up on Facebook and how to get information from Wikipedia. Uh, that's all I can do. And of course I'm praying and I, I uh, trying to teach them how to work their faith and activate faith uh, uh, and connect them with faith communities over here and maybe get some funding going. It's very difficult, very slow. Uh, frustrating, heart when you see the stories, but that's what I've been doing and then trying to, uh, you know, keep the conversation side uh, of its highest context. Can get it to do and, uh, and, you know, define the process, uh, name the space, and get things to make more sense to more people. That's what I'm doing. Awesome. That's fantastic, Charlie. <laughs> Hi, Lucy. Hi, Anna. Hi. Hi. What was Charlie just saying? Uh, he's just, he's been working uh, with, uh, with raising awareness about projects that people are doing in particular um, Printernet and orphanages in Africa. Charlie's back on. He can speak for himself now. <laughs> Maybe. He's got bandwidth. He's got bandwidth problems. Okay. He, uh, we, uh, we jammed and called it bad width. I think I heard you say Printernet. Yep. <laughs> That's Michael Josefowitz's project. Who he's amazing. Hey 
Hey, Jaslinder. Nice to see you. Hi, Gary. I, I can't Hello. hear you. I'm not hearing. It's uh, not coming. It's not coming through. Yeah, you're popping in and out, Charlie. Yeah. It's Doug. I see Doug in there, too. Hey, Doug. Hola. Hey, Harry. Hey, Harry. All right. What a lovely room for I really, I really, really feel inadequate in the face of Jaswinder and Charlie's beards. I think I got to get to work <laughs> and, and expand my um, facial accoutrement. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> You could maybe just work with what you have and just go for something very, like a really crazy style. Yeah. So that you time. Yeah, but, but then I have to contend with my wife, who doesn't have the frame of reference to understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Since she's got to look at me a lot longer and more than you guys do. Fair enough. Anybody want to check in? I'd love to. Check in. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, I'm. Uh, I'm. There's Harry. You're a bit. Uh, you're a bit glitchy, Charlie, but. Go for it if you can. And yeah. Well, I'm just going to say a few things and, and get off because this, this is not working. Um, thank you guys for doing this. This is so awesome. Uh, I have a lot of faith in it. Is to I uh, just want you to know that I am listening and paying attention uh, and keep keep it up, keep up the good work. So signing off from, uh, see you on the other side. I'm, I'm in the ozone farm cloudscape and I'll be happy Awesome. Thank you, Charlie. We got the we got some key pieces there. Support channel if you're there. Okay. O Ozone farm cloudscape. <laughs> yes. That's my main channel. And then we're also on added support, uh, which is a side channel where we're doing actually nitty gritty work uh, on printer net and stuff like that. Okay, thank you. Awesome, Charlie. Can we get a link to that to the place where you're doing actual work? We'll figure that out. They're both findable in Messenger. That's where uh, Ozone Farm and and uh, and support 
are located. Awesome. Chaz Winder, I think you you jumped in for check-in. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to jump in. I've just been playing with a lot of children out there today. I've just been playing with the computer and I've put another hard drive in here to, uh, to use it as a backup. And I forgot to connect the, the webcam to it. And when I did, for some reason, it didn't connect connection with the sound. So it was a slight panic there. What have I done or I haven't done? So thank you. Um, everything is fine. Please carry on and I'll listen in and have a little snooze if I can. Harry? Well, this must be the twilight zone. Uh, considering that I already passed all of the deadlines I should meet today. So I can possibly be alive at this moment. And I feel kind of exhausted as well. Uh, well deadlines for what? Get out, come again. Deadlines for what? Uh, I promised to send a mail yesterday. I'm still working on that one. I want to have, I want to have a f uh, f finished the drawing and shared some files and uh, 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 what is an uh, amphetta? Wie heißt das? Uh, well, lots of work. Work, the work probably. And then of course all my, the, I'm flooded with ideas today, so that's, it's raining ideas, it's difficult as well to concentrate. Because if I captured them and I got more projects and I will let them go, I, I regret that as well. So that's basically the way I find you guys here. But apparently this is important too, otherwise I would not be here. Thank you. With that, I'm in. I've just decided to cancel this Brussels trip because it just got too complicated and they tell me that i will be on crutches for a week after the treatment and um i don't fancy doing a long journey on crutches with luggage and whatever and there is a clinic in birmingham in uk which does the same thing it's just that the guy has only just opened up and he, so he doesn't have the experience that this guy in Brussels had. So I was going for the one in Brussels because he was more experienced. And I've decided the strain of being in a foreign country and sorting out all the logistics is just too much. And I've just had a chat with the doctor in Birmingham and he seems really nice. And it's just a relief to say, okay, let it go. So sorry, I'm not gonna be in Brussels in september for our picnic in the park maybe you'll all come to birmingham <laughs> and i've been having lovely talks with lucy we've just sort of begun to exchange yeah i have a feeling that the three of us are gonna get something together Tammy and Lucy and that, yeah. I think so too. I think so too. Uh, I had a few rough days um, last week. Too many questions, too much going on. And it's just amazing how these processes take their own, oh, they go on their own journey and then you pop out and Today has been filled with a lot of clarity over things. Um, the conversations I've been having with Tammy have been a really big part of that. Um, I'm just amazed at how much you learn when you 
have the opportunity to talk to somebody else about your work and then to listen back. And, um, and when, you, when you make the effort to understand somebody else's and where the connections are, when you step outside of, you know, when you walk around the corner, go in someone else's garden for a while and try and see how things are over there. It's, uh, I think this, I love it, this whole conversation process. And then Anna and I had a really great chat also the other day and then sharing messages today. And um, yeah, it feels very exciting what could be there. Um, and one thing that this is just to be kind of honest without any polishing. One of the thing that feels really good for me is that this is two women. There's been so much, and that's not to knock, you know, just Winda, Dar, Carrie. I can see the connections there and I love to interact with all of you. But for all of my academic journey, all of the role models I had were men. Um, and if I stepped over into a new area, there was always a man who was a guide or a encourager or a collaborator. So this feels really nice to have found two women who I really respect and can see lots of opportunities to do things with. That feels like a, um, an indicator of change for me and for, you know, what we're all doing. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy today. Happy and content. Another beard man coming. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Alex. Hi, Alex. Hi. We're just doing check ins, Alex. <clears throat> um, yesterday. I've got, to, I've got to turn off the YouTube video. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, yesterday I spent a couple of hours listening to a Radical Wholeness. And um, I'm also working doing a registration at a Sikh temple in Surrey, which is one of the largest ones in our, our kind of region here. And it's so amazing to be kind of deep in another culture and a sacred culture. Um, and I just feel really good about what's happening here and what's happening inside of me and being more and more comfortable with really just being who I am. So I'm grateful for that. And I'm really grateful for, for everyone here in this learning journey that we've all been on. I've been just, yeah, really grateful to be present with you all and to know you all and to see what, and to feel what we can do together. So I'm excited and. Uh, I'm so glad for you. I really am. I'm. Hope you meet some of the, the advanced Sikhs and maybe get to meditate with them. And one of the other people that I would uh, I would uh, suggest is the, is the Brahma Kumaris. They they have a wonderful meditation uh, system as well. Yeah, I go next. Um, you're there, you're in. <laughs> Tammy and I had the Women Matters um, conversation and mostly Tammy and I just assisted <laughs> uh, was talking about um, this this group um, so we are out in the air not only here and it was really 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 good 
So, and, and um, Heidi asked quite good questions to, to get it more specific and uh, people that don't have a clue about us. Uh, yeah, getting the basics. That was a very interesting and good conversation. Um, and uh, yesterday I brought my, my eldest daughter with her two kids to, to the train station. So I had almost a week completely family. <laughs> so first all three girls and then the two left because they had to work and the eldest stayed with the kids. And I was quite exhausted afterwards, but it was so fun. It was so great. And, and they are so sweet. The little ones, they are three and a half and 10 months. So I was grandmother <laughs> for a week. And now I'm here. So that's why I, I couldn't attend on, on Saturday and Sunday or Friday. And yeah, I was just very busy. Yeah, and some new work coming up, some new coaching. So it's quite quite a good time. And uh, when Lucy said, "Well, with the women," said, "I would like to join that club, <laughs> that women's club." <laughs> so, and I'm very very interested how the talks with Marie went. Tammy. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, so for the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I'll just quickly check in on that. Marie is amazing. She's wonderful. And we've really had some beautiful connection in, uh, in, in our work and intersections. And uh, we're going to meet again in a month. And uh, she's on holiday for the next couple weeks. But it's just kind of... Um, she had great questions and she took me through a little bit of a process where I was telling, she said, okay, if you're going to tell anyone about the alphabet code, what would you say? And when I said what I said, I still had some elements of story that weren't really resonant, blame, shame, this stuff. Right. So she had me go through and tell the story four different times or so. And, um, so that was a really great process to kind of um, really land in myself. And she's a wonderful person to work with. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what emerges there. Um, and so, yeah, thank you, Gertrude. And we're on a path. Did you record the session, Tammy? I did. I have to get, uh, she said for my own use, I'd like, I, I need to reach out to her to see if she's open to sharing it. Cause I think it's a great example of a collaborative conversation. Um, so I would like to share it, but I haven't, I haven't reached out to her to get permission. And I think she'd probably want to review it and feel into it. And if that isn't possible, maybe the, the summaries in text of how you describe the alphabet code, it would be really interesting to see how that progresses. And then how did you start and how did you finish? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I had exactly the same question. Great. Yeah. I was just thinking to myself, there'd be a lot of work involved making graphic representations for each letter and each word of the alphabet code with the associated meanings and artwork. It'd be a lot of work, but it'd be interesting. I think whoever did it would enjoy doing it, enjoy creating it. Well, Harry has, has done done that for for me um thank you harry <clears throat> more work to do 
I saw some uh, I saw some artwork when I was searching for uh, graphics for a different project, and it reminded me it was it was very ancient work that was discovered recently from some really old monastery in some quiet little quaint village somewhere in, in England. And it was beautiful. I saw a few images on the website. They were so beautiful. And I thought, wow, that would make a nice font, an interesting font. Really mystical and magical looking stuff from some artist. So I'm going to hunt for that and try and find it. I'll try and get the URL and send it and share it around so others can see it. Doug, I have a picture of you, like the Cheshire cat sitting on a mushroom for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I'm sort of feeling that one. <laughs> feeling I was picking up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sort of feeling that way. Um, yeah, I... Um, I'm just coming out of a working session with Fabian and we're heading Friday into that values conversation. Um, and um, I'm trying to poke and probe him to join in. We can always use the help. And, uh, but we were also talking about, um, we were wrestling with What, what in some of these conversations folks refer to as the field that's generated, that's co-created by the people that show up and participate. And, and that comes out, that sort of expresses itself really easily. And I, I'm really finding myself pulled to, to see whether there's a way of crawling inside that, unpacking that but not in the old way, like not using the old languaging and the old, you know, mapping, graphing, you know, um, uh, charting, you know, um, yeah, not, 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 well, Harry actually in a way that you would lend itself to your talents, but not, not in the way like systems folks and people that like doing, you know, relationship graphs and stuff do. Um, and just unpacking energy in these spaces and what you know what comprises it like what what are the all the dimensions and facets of of relationship connection you know the energy effect of jazz winter bringing in i assume his grandkids and and you know they instantaneously change the energy of the whole conversation and they're popping out does the same it's sort of you know it's like um and it's it, and it's of of for me of my experience in the moment it's a living thing and um but it has like dimensions and ingredients in that. Um, and I really wanna see whether there's a way of feeling into that, sensing into that and, and coming up with a, a vocabulary or language to reference it um, in a deeper and more in, in sort of conscious, aware, informed way. Um, and, and understand things that strengthen it, things that weaken it, things that um, uh, that speak to its persistence synchronously and but also asynchronously. Like what are the what are the bonds bonds and connections that are sustained between conversations? Like they still live. Um, so so I'm. Um, 
in a inquiry unknown, like feeling into that. Um, and I like puzzles. So that's part of it. And the other part is um, we're, we leave, I'm not clear, either tonight or tomorrow for Michigan, which is one of our four or five potential, like where are we going to hang our hat, call home possibly. And Michigan is the, my wife's parents and, um, you know, a potential decision to become primary caregiver for them for the rest of their lives. So it would be, you know, like a 10 or 15 year potential um, commitment or less. And, uh, and so we're heading into that. And, um, and I'm sort of looking forward to that. I'm feel, feeling my way into that as well and supporting Cheryl and feeling her way through that since there's much bigger charge and stuff going on for her around, you know, wanting to be there for her folks and not sure when she wants to be that proximate to her sister. And um, it's, it's, you know, classic family complication stuff. So, uh, so that's me. I'm complete. What will change for you, Doug, like day to day with a move to Michigan? Um, a lot more yard work, uh, you know, a lot more driving, like, you know, doctor's appointments and errand stuff, um, because I, the bulk of the caregiving would probably fall on me since Cheryl does bookkeeping and that tent will tend to take up, you know, more traditional full time for her. So, um, but other than that, it doesn't, it won't change sort of my life and of our being out there uh, in terms of what I'm engaged with and doing um, and looking to contribute continue. I'm pretty much 100% virtualized at this point in all of my work, so I can be anywhere, um, provided there's a good internet connect. shared before in this group I uh, also got my uh, I had to open up my belief system to new ways of understanding so to speak and, uh, Timmy uses the word overstanding and now that Doug is talking about this field and feeling into it and having and I also I'm kind of trying to way to Get in touch with it because understanding is not a word that's a word that's helping me there much but it's more about allowing and trusting and receiving and stuff like that which is a uh, quite a journey for me and opening up <clears throat> and res we have of course have already some words like resonating and all that it's, uh, it seems to be more about frequency and feeling and about seeing and understanding uh, so it's a fascinating journey and i also feel kind of uh, Walking around like a blind, blind man, so to speak, and I, I'm, I don't want to discard the the capacities uh, I have built up, but I am very aware of the fact that it's just uh, covering a small percentage of what can be received, so to speak. So it's an interesting journey, so, uh, feeling into the resonant field. <laughs> Thank you. It sort of links up with what um, I've been mulling over, which is um, the validation of subjective experience. So when you're talking about resonance or feeling into 
all these things um, come under this sort of umbrella of subjective experience, which is, which has been viewed very suspiciously by people who demand facts and statistics and a lot of the digital world of course is very much cast in that way so yeah it would be interesting to for me anyway to approach the field in that sort of way of As you said, something, I mean, I didn't quite understand what the old way was, no charts and maps and, but I'm wondering whether that is connected with validating our subjective experience, intuitive feeling, um, just any feelings that, that can't be proved, you know, that don't have, um, evidence external evidence for them they just exist okay. can you give us an example and you just channel down <laughs> um, what was that what i would like to say here uh, Anna, is that just because we don't currently or somebody currently saying we don't have evidence for these subjective points of view or even subjective feelings does not mean to say that they don't exist and they do exist and there's a huge difference can i just finish saying this and i'll talk with you i can see i'll come back to it <laughs> I it's love the not, way he gives priority to his kids. No, Alex. Adding, that one of the other girls has said you can't do the splits, and she's showing me that she can, which is great. She can. <laughs> I'm not. I'm going to take a huge risk here with four ladies. Oh, excuse me. Now, Anna, Alex said, could you be more specific? And I said, Alex, you're channeling Anna. <laughs> I don't understand that. Well, you're, you're, you're the one who's nine out of ten times likely to pop up on the heels of somebody saying something and, and saying, could you be like more concrete and give us a concrete example of what you're oh, I see. talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, does anybody have examples that they would like to offer? I mean, I, I could bring up, but it'd be nice to hear what other people. I've had them often in um, meeting new people, potential collaborators, um, that I and my partner in the charity have met somebody new who's kind of offered something or wanted something or... And I've had a feeling of like something has gone on in that conversation. Um, that I have a real strong certainty of that is very hard to articulate in words, but yet will guide my behavior in the future. Um, and the other person maybe hasn't been picked up on some of that and has a very, they've just listened to what was said. There wasn't much reading of the other things in between. So that for me is a common, the field that is, I mean, now we have a more complex one because there's, what is there, eight of us, but you know, the field that goes on between two people or three people, that for me is a, a good one. Okay. Uh, just jumping at the deep end, the, the most responsible job occupation career and it takes a huge amount of time minimum 15 years is responsible of you ladies 
It's your huge responsibility. In the whole universe, you, you, the first nine months, you, you nurture something inside of you. And us men, we're oblivious to what that feels like. And then the birth process, I witnessed two of my children being born. I fainted on the first one. <laughs> when I saw the, you know, it's kind of like I was feeling the same feelings as she was, but obviously I wasn't. And then when I saw the, the head pop out, I was gone. And I remember the nurse, one of the nurses saying, get him some water. <laughs> okay. That's objectivity. Or so, subjectly speaking, you really, within the first few years of, of that child's life, my life, everybody's life, you are doing the programming and you are communicating at a tremendously high level. You can look at a child sleeping, walking, doing its normal things like today. <laughs> Okay, so these these systems that we call symptoms, intuition, um, being able to have empathy, being able to look at something from afar and be able to feel that what is going on there, that young lady waved it. Way back. No. So it took me years to, to kind of get into that when I was developing. And I remember th one of the things that I had great difficulty was with how do you, how do I, when you have that first eye contact, and I was given to understand by psychologists of all that there is a three second sort of um, window where you can make eye contact and smile. It's more like three milliskins. Eye contact, if you're not smiling instantly, that moment is gone probably forever. Women do that automatically, and women to women, watching women to women interaction is fascinatingly good. It's taken me years to learn the female language in lots of different cultures, and I'm still nowhere near proficient. They can run circles around us men everywhere, and we're lost. So we, stick my neck out again, have been pre-programmed by the ladies to do what is required to make the world the way they want it. And empirical evidence here, Anna. Empirical just means, it's a big word, but it just means that you have to observe what's happening and decide which direction that happening is taking. And the, the, the happening that seems to be taking shape currently is I think in the next few generations, men are going to be staying at home and women are going to take over the workplace and the huge benefit of that, I think, will be world peace because women are the peacemakers. They'll sit down in the committee rooms, the cabinets, the senates and whatever, and they'll mull things over and say, look, this is just not fair. Just because they're a different color, a different race or whatever, we have to share the resources and we have to look after the children. I think that would be wonderful. Does that come anywhere near what you were getting at, Anna? Well, it's something else. I mean, I totally agree with you, sort of reluctantly, because I feel you're coming from a very different place. But actually, I do agree with you. But um, that really... Uh, Well, just to address a bit what Lucy said about, you know, how you can pick up something sort of reading between the lines somehow when you meet somebody. 
what I'm talking about really is something which is, it, you know, it's not set apart. It's actually not divisible from what we think of as our opinions or our feelings or our thoughts. It's all part of the same thing. We are so much affected by our feelings. Um, you know, our thoughts are not separate from our feelings. Um, so I think if we paid more attention to what we're actually feeling at the time, we might understand our thoughts much better, where they're coming from. So that is the process of becoming aware of catching your feelings and catching what you're thinking at the same time. And you can superimpose that. That's a tremendous thing that, that can be um, extremely uplifting. Uh, in the conversation I had with Marie, that's how she led. She, she was um, really sensing into where the resonance was, and she was really quite overt about it. And it was kind of, it was like a training um, in that way, like just being able to witness her modeling, feeling into the field. And when I went into my head, the connection was way less. And then when I landed in my body and my heart, the connection was just there and present and uh, I, I could feel it and so could she. So there was some really beautiful field work demonstrating what it is to sense resonance and, um, and navigate in a conversation with that. You said she was quite overt about it. Well, can you um, can you say more about that? Well, I seem to recall at the beginning our, of our conversation. I haven't reviewed it yet. That uh, she just talked directly about about you know for her there was um, she felt into things and that that's how she operated and that. Uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting to rewatch and see how she said it, but she basically just said it out loud, openly. Thank you. That resonates, for, resonates hear me, with what Lucy said about felt sense. Because I kind of was trained to not to consider my feelings because these were emotions, sentiments and all that. And to only speak when I had all understood it myself and it was reasonable and logical and concise and coherent uh, construction of words that made sense, like the engineering style. And other than that, was basically considered invalid. And what I'm learning here, and that's happening for quite some years now, that the feelings do count as well. So this is an interesting development. And being aware, as Jeswinder puts it, is probably the thing that you have. Don't stop your thinking, but add your feelings, add your experience. I, I just remember uh, when I was a student, um, I was living in a community where one of the, the men was a psychology uh, doctorate. And he was really smart guy. And he was like, <laughs> his intellect was really high. He's a professor now. So I was at that time, he could just in his conversations he could just overwrite me so when we had a conversation and i was like going out of that conversation and then my my head was turned on again but in that he had arguments for everything and um and even to override his feelings so at some point, I was just like, stop, something is wrong here. I don't know what is wrong. I don't know. And you might have the best arguments, but something feels wrong here. And let's go deeper or so I don't, 
I don't take what you just argued so brilliantly. And actually that was hard work, hard work. And at the same time, it brought him to really go where it hurts or where uh, things really went to feelings he didn't want to feel. And um, so I, I didn't succeed much, but, but for me it was a, a very important to trust myself to say, even if I don't understand and even if I don't know and even if, if I can't argue, but something is not feeling right. And, and for me, that was an important step to make, that I trust myself even if I don't know. But you have to trust yourself. If you're going to look at the child's face and you're going to mirror what that child feels so that you know what to do, even if the child doesn't, yeah. us, us men are not good at that. We may be pure logic. That doesn't yeah. work always. Yeah. yeah. I could see why, my daughter doing that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see why dogs and, and people get along so well. Dogs are excellent at reading facial expressions and interpreting them. I've been, I've been doing this recently. This is one of the questions that's in my mind. How does a dog know? And when I'm talking now, I'm, as I'm becoming more and more aware, I'm becoming more and more aware of my facial expressions. In that I'm, when I talk and I, say, and I can feel my eyebrows moving or the little cheek muscles doing something. And one of the things I picked up the other day was that I occasionally pull back and my ears go backwards. Dogs use these expressions constantly. They're aware of these and they can mirror them on themselves and they know exactly how you feel and they'll react. Children do the same. Children are marvelous things. And I'm one of the biggest children there is. I'm learning constantly. And this group, as I've said many times before, is marvelously good for me. Hello, Sam. You're too good as well. I just want to pick up something, Jaswinda, that you said, because um, Sort of lost the the thread somehow <laughs> with these dogs coming in, but um, what people were saying about, um, or what you were saying about women having the ability to somehow connect on a feeling level, and what I wanted to say was that women have really done that work for people, for humanity, for quite a while. And it is hard work. Somebody said, oh, Gertraud, you said it was really hard work trying to connect with this guy. And I don't, the idea, I, it, you know, it's not that women want to take over. It's not that we want the men to stay at home and the women should you know, run the world. It's that we would love the, the men to develop that sens sensibility too. There's no reason why they shouldn't. And if you say, oh, well, you know, the men are not good at it, but the women are, that's already setting it in stone. It's not like that. There are a lot of men who are really sensitive. And Actually, I have to, to say something about that. Okay. <laughs> Niobe Way. She, she, she yes, and said that they have the same. 